Today we're flipping the switch on something that most of us never think about, electricity. Not electricity in general, but something oddly specific. Why does the United States use 110 to 120 volts for its power supply? And who else does? Believe it or not, the US isn't alone in this slightly lower voltage world. And if you've ever traveled internationally, you might have fried your hairdryer or your laptop charger trying to plug it in overseas. So today we're diving into the countries that also use 110 to 120 volts. And more importantly, how we ended up with such a divided world of volts and plugs. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with a little context. Back in the early days of electricity, think Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, the world hadn't settled on a global standard. Edison's early electrical systems in the U.S. used direct current, DC, at 110 volts. When alternating current, AC eventually took over, thanks to Tesla and Westinghouse, the 110 volts infrastructure stuck around in America. It made sense. Cities had already been wired that way. Changing it would have been massively expensive. Meanwhile, over in Europe, Countries were building their electrical systems from scratch a little later. They took the opportunity to use higher voltages, 220 to 240 volts, because higher voltage means lower current for the same power. That translates to smaller wires, which saves a lot of money when you're wiring an entire country. So Europe went high, the US stayed low, and the divide has remained ever since. Now, if you thought the U.S. was the only country using 110 to 120 volts, you'd be mistaken. There's actually a small but interesting group of countries that fall into this category, most of them either influenced historically by the United States or developed their systems independently around the same era. Let's start with Canada. Not too surprising, Canada shares a lot with the U.S., and when it came to setting up an electrical grid, it made sense to adopt the same voltage standard. Today, Canada uses 120 volts at 60 hertz, just like its neighbor to the south. Next up is Mexico. Again, due to proximity and economic ties with the US, Mexico adopted the North American voltage standard. You'll find 127 volts at 60 hertz in most Mexican homes and businesses, which is still considered within the low voltage category. Moving a little further out, parts of Central America and the Caribbean also run on 110 to 120 volts. Countries like Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Honduras all use voltages in the 110 to 120 range. The same goes for Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. Why? U.S. influence played a big role, especially in the 20th century, as infrastructure projects, often backed by American companies, helped build out power grids in these regions. Now, here's where things get especially interesting. One of the most unique entries on the list is Japan. Japan uses 100 volts, not even 110. And to make things more complicated, the country is split between two frequencies, 50 hertz in the east, including Tokyo, and 60 hertz in the west, including Osaka. This divide is a result of Japan purchasing electrical generators from two different countries, Germany and the US, in the early 1900s. The split stuck, and to this day, Japan has to deal with incompatible electrical frequencies depending on where you are. Despite its ultra-modern tech, Japan has never upgraded its voltage, largely due to cost and the fact that the lower voltage actually makes some devices safer, albeit less efficient. There are also smaller nations and territories, 
many of which are or were U.S. territories, or heavily influenced by American infrastructure aid. For example, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, and the U.S. Virgin Islands all use 120 volts at 60 hertz. Again, the pattern here is clear. U.S. territories naturally follow U.S. standards. Even some Pacific Island nations like Taiwan use 110 volts at 60 hertz, though this is sometimes a subject of confusion since some areas also accommodate dual voltage. It's always smart to double-check before plugging anything in. So with all this variation, you might be wondering, why hasn't the world just standardized its voltage? Well, it's not that simple. Changing a country's electrical grid is a massive and expensive endeavor. It's not just about rewiring homes. It's about changing power plants, transformers, substations, and every single appliance on the market. The cost to benefit ratio simply doesn't add up. And then there's consumer inertia. Appliances are already designed for local voltages. Power companies have infrastructure built around what works for them. And honestly, unless you're an international traveler or manufacturer, you probably don't even think about voltage in your daily life. It's invisible until your phone charger starts smoking in a hotel in Italy. Voltage is only one part of the puzzle. There's also the matter of plugs and sockets. Even countries that share voltage standards don't necessarily use the same plug shapes. For example, the US, Canada, and Mexico use type A and B plugs. But Japan, which also uses 100 volts, has a similar plug type, yet their sockets don't always accept polarized plugs from North America. That means even if your device is rated for the right voltage, the plug still might not fit unless you carry an adapter. So when you're traveling or moving abroad, it's not just about will this blow up? It's also, will this even plug in? In the end, the world of voltage may seem like a patchwork of numbers and plug shapes, but it tells a deeper story about history, influence, and practicality. The 110 to 120 volt system isn't just an American quirk. It's a legacy shared by nations shaped by trade, colonization, or technological timing. And while global standardization may never happen, each country has built a system that works for its own needs. So whether you're in Tokyo, Toronto, or Tegucigalpa, that little jolt of electricity running through your home is part of a much bigger and surprisingly diverse global current. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.